While many were initially put off by early trailers showcasing battalions as a supplement of the weapons triangle, what the mechanic eventually evolved into on release day was a highly nuanced, extra layer of customization which not only opened up the breadth of tools available to the player, but also contributed to a global rebalancing of the player and enemy phase, which I personally believe created an overall more strategic experience. However, because battalions are such a new and unique concept to Fire Emblem, they are also one of the most misunderstood aspects of Three Houses specifically, which is unfortunate because understanding how battalions work, how they can be optimized, and what are the overall best performing battalions will surely augment your strategic prowess. And wouldn't you know it, that's exactly what this guide is going to do for you. So with that folks, let's get right into it. Arguably, Battalion's most impactful contribution to your army are their offensive gambit attacks. These are powerful attacks that depending on the Battalion can ignore enemy follow-up, cause area of effect damage spray, and stun or rattle multiple enemies at once. When a unit is rattled, they will not only suffer a huge stat debuff, lose access to their own battalion, including gambit attacks and battalion stat buffs, but they will also lose the ability to move for an entire turn. The potential that these attacks provide the player to crowd control the enemy and get out of seemingly unwinnable situations cannot be understated, and I think that most people who have played even a fraction of this game quickly comprehend their significance. But what I feel is largely misunderstood, due to the game's lack of clarification on the subject, is how the effectiveness of these attacks are calculated. Well, we need look no further than Fire Emblem's newest stat line added exclusively to three houses, Charm. The game vaguely states that Charm raises Gambit's might, hit rate, and avoidance. While it certainly does affect your Gambit damage, the equation is a little bit more complicated than that and your charm's impact on Gambit Might ends up being divided by 5. Basically, the raw stat is most impactful in affecting the Gambit to successfully connect. 1 point of charm equals 5 points of Gambit hit and avoid. Your unit's charm is weighed against the target's charm, and the difference between the two is added to your Gambit's base hit rate. The hit percentage from Charisma caps at 30, so a Gambit like Onslaught with its base 50% hit would never have more than 80% hit without boosters, even if the unit had 6 more Charisma than the target. In the same breath, it will never have less than 20% hit, even if the unit has less than 6 Charisma. While there is a strict cap, the disparity of 60% hit and avoid over only 12 points of stats is undoubtedly huge and should be considered, especially in harder modes like Maddening where humanoid enemies are consistently toe-to-toe -to -toe in the charm department with the majority of your units. Units with low to middling charm growths like Linhart, Caspar, Lysithia, Raphael, Ash, Ignatz, and Cyril are going to be shaken, rattled, and rolled if put in range of an enemy with a battalion, and they're also going to severely struggle connecting any offensive gambits themselves. Manuela's Rally Charm is of note here, as its plus 8 to charm boost can give an easy target of enemy gambits a potential 40% boost to avoid, as well as the same boost to connect their own gambit. The ability Hit Plus 20, which is learned by mastering the Archer class, will be applied to your gambit's total hit rate when equipped. That's all fine and good, but how can you further reliably increase the hit rate of your gambit? When a unit initiates a gambit attack and the target is currently in the attack range of other allies, a gambit boost will occur. This effect will boost the gambit's hit and might depending on the number of available allies and their support levels. You're able to stack up to three allies support boosts on the field, so units with extended attack ranges like mages and archers are great candidates for building supports to increase the potential and likelihood of a gambit boost occurring. You're also able to throw in a fourth ally into the equation if the unit initiating the offensive gambit has an adjutant equipped. So in an absolutely perfect endgame scenario, with three A support allies in range of the target and an A rank supported adjutant equipped, you're able to give a a 16 point boost in might and an 80% boost in hit to gambit attacks. Now obviously the setup and prereqs for that level of boost potency isn't going to be applicable for the vast majority of units, but hopefully it gives you an idea of how to build your setups and supports to maximize your offensive gambit's overall reliability. Battalions work off their own set of hit points, called endurance, symbolized on the map screen with these three triangles. Green triangles means that your battalion endurance is above two-thirds of its total endurance. Two yellow triangles means you are above one-third of your total endurance. And one red triangle means that you're less than one-third of your max endurance. 
Endurance damage is accumulated when the unit your battalion is equipped to takes damage during combat. When a unit's battalion endurance reaches zero, that battalion will retreat and the equipped unit will lose all battalion stat buffs as well as the ability to use gambits for the duration of the chapter. Generally, endurance depletes by one half of your unit's HP lost during combat. However, this game has a very strange rule of thirds benchmark system in that no matter how much damage you take in a single round of combat, your battalion will never lose more than a third of its max endurance. In other words, you can never go from three green triangles to one red triangle or two yellow triangles to your battalion completely retreating. Hopefully, this example clarifies things a bit. Leone has taken a total of 18 damage on this map, dropping her battalion endurance to 21 from her max 30. Because 21 over 30 is more than two thirds of her battalion endurance, no matter how much damage I take in the next round of combat, my battalion endurance will not go lower than the two triangle benchmark of 20. After that benchmark is met, I will take normal endurance damage up until I hit the red triangle benchmark of 10 endurance, and so on until your battalion completely retreats. You can actually see this process happening on the left side of the battle forecast, symbolized by fading triangles. But is it really important to consider endurance? Well, I think it depends on the unit for sure. A frontliner who is trading blows constantly with the enemy is not only going to benefit the most from the stat boost battalions provide, but will also want the insurance that they'll remain active throughout the entire battle. This is why I highly suggest, at least in maddening mode, obtaining a B rank in authority and running defensive tactics on your most active frontliners, especially on large maps with high enemy density found throughout the bulk of this game. Having endurance damage is lessening the damage correlation between HP and and endurance from one half of total HP damage to one fourth. It'll also help you stay in the strict endurance threshold ranges for the battalion variants of Vantage, Desperation, and Wrath, which is much more difficult to do over their vanilla counterparts because there is no reliable way to heal your battalions outside of yellow spirit tiles, which will always be a completely random toss up between healing battalion HP or recovering a gambit use. And that brings us to what I assume many of you are here for, my personal authority, rank, and battalion recommendations. Do yourself and me a favor and close this video now if you can't handle opinions other than your own. The main thing to take away here is don't let the lettered rank requirements fool you into thinking A rank battalions are the end all be all best battalions in the game. No. In fact, many B or even C battalions stand toe to toe and sometimes even surpass the gambit and stat boost utility of many A rank battalions. Another key thing to remember is the big picture, which is investment cost. Certain units who have a bane in authority, like Felix, Kaspar, and Hilda, can get by just fine off E rank and D rank authority levels, and will ultimately free up your instructional sessions to hit more vital rank benchmarks for desired reclasses, abilities, and combat arts faster. Case and point, the very first battalion in the game you acquire from your dear old dad, the E rank Gerald's Mercenaries, and overall it's one of the best battalions in the game, especially if availability and accessibility is considered. Not only does this gambit have two charges with a four tile range and a thick 75 endurance, but the stat boost it provides is just what Chupi likes, plus 10 to crit and plus 15 to avoid. Listen, other stat boosts like attack, defense, and charm are great and all, especially for enhancing a unit's desired affinities, but hit, crit, and avoid are three values that are the hardest to raise based off a unit's base stat line alone, and will have the most overall impact, I feel, on a unit's performance when boosted from battalions. So if a gambit has more than plus 10 in any of these stats, I don't care what the gambit is, or what it does, or what rank it is, the battalion is worth equipping in my mind. And yes, I would never personally equip anything that gave minus 10 avoid, ever, even on a slower unit. You have way too many battalion options to settle on a permanent gimp in every battle scenario. No thank you. The E rank, Seros Holy Monks, which you can buy from the battalion guild directly after completing Yuritsa's quest, grants incredibly modest boons and a paltry 30 endurance. But the power of the gambit it provides, Stride, cannot be understated. If set up correctly, you can grant plus 5 movement to up to 12 units twice in one map. 
I'd argue that this effect completely changes the way you will play this game, and its inclusion alone supplants the omnipresent dancer meta found in almost every other entry in the series. This battalion is a great one to equip, along with many other non-offensive Gambit battalions on a unit with low charm who may have a hard time using and connecting an offensive Gambit. Another ally effect of note is the SR Research Group, a special battalion you should get immediately once you unlock the online liaison features at Chapter 4. Successfully complete 4-man recon training 3 weeks in a row, and you'll be rewarded with an E-rank battalion that grants B-rank level stat boosts. This battalion is also the earliest you can obtain the Blessing Gambit, one of my favorites, which when cast upon up to 4 allies, prevents a lethal blow once for the entire duration of the map. It's basically Miracle, but with a 100% success rate. The D-Rank Kingdom Archers Battalion, found exclusively in the Blue Lines Battalion Guild, is a really ho-hum D-Rank Battalion in terms of stat bonuses, but its strength relies on granting you super early access to one of the most powerful gambits in the game. Retribution. This gambit will allow all targeted units to counter attacks at any range, excluding ballista gambits and specific siege tomes, for five whole turns. Other routes also get this gambit but are locked behind A-rank battalions. It's great for mixing effective and powerful one-range weaponry with a two-range bite. And while there's no denying the potential of this gambit, especially when you're a juggernaut like Dimitri or a dodge tank like Sword of Void plus 20 Falcon Knight Ingrid who can handle half the army being thrown at them and still have a good chance at sustaining throughout the enemy phase by abusing 2RN stacked avoid rates, I find its actual usefulness in the majority of scenarios incredibly situational, especially within the context of finding deployment balance between offensive and defensive gambit effects. If you watch my mastery ability guide, I talk in depth numerous times about how I think enemy phase cheese in this game, while fun to experiment with, is not justified because of the extensive amount of grinding, investment, and setup both before and during combat to be considered reliable. And it's also, I'd argue, not any more effective than just making use of all your units in the player phase, normally. Especially when, for every other route besides blue lines, by the time you get this gambit, you'll have plenty of units that already specialize in dealing with 3 plus range enemies. A mage with bow breaker baiting at 4 range will have a 70% avoid rate over bow knights in maddening mode already. Whether you agree with me or not, don't deploy multiple units on the same map with this gambit, there is no need. With the ludicrous length of effect time and dual charges, you'd just be denying yourself of a more universally useful gambit, such as... My favorite battalion, the C-Rank Immortal Core, found exclusively on the Golden Deer route. It's a beefed up 12 might variant of Fusillade. I love Fusillade. If you've ever used any iteration of Fusillade, you know exactly how great it is at denying movement because of its simple yet effective AoE pattern, its 2 to 3 range, and 2 gambit charges. There are plenty of iterations of this gambit found on every route, including the very reliable and all around fantastic stat buffs of the D rank Saros Archers and the poopy minus 10 avoid of Varley Archers from Petra and Bernadetta's Paralog. All of them are amazing and viable all the way up to the end game solely due to Fusillade alone, but Immortal Core, specifically with its plus 15 avoid, expanded AoE range, and capped 120 endurance, takes the raw utility of Fusillade and gives it a premium sheen. You can run this beast of a battalion without defensive tactics and rest assured that the oppressive plus 8 attack buff will not diminish even on the most girthy of maps. Thank you so much for watching. I did have a bit of a cold for that narration, so please excuse my boogers hitting the mic, that's bound to happen. You know, I could make an entire video talking about battalions, but I figured I'd just go over a few of them. Since there's already a post on SaranusForest.com by Virtue333 that does a better job than I ever could, honestly. Link in the Despacito. Thank you to Link King 7 Puzzles B, Jammy, Mr. D, uh, Mecca for the feedback, and also Calm for all the footage. Couldn't have done this without you. And especially thank you to these fucking patrons over here. These guys are just the shit. Oh my god. Look at them all. Look at all those names. Look at them. They give me the incentive every day to be myself for once in my goddamn life, and I thank you for that. And I want to thank you for joining me on another quest to discover the mysteries of the emblem. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, y'all, stay frothy.